Yeah. Networking is extremely valuable if you want that career velocity, career acceleration. You want to find, help find a job. You want to more rapidly accomplish your goals. But it requires work. It requires work through a strong foundation, work, work through execution, work through optimization, and this continuous work. Effective networking is a superpower, but it takes work. On this episode of the Creator Community, we learn how to build a successful roadmap for networking through a better understanding of ourselves, our values, and helping others first. Check out the show. Welcome to the Creator Community. This is a podcast from book publisher, New Degree Press, or NDP, powered by Manuscripts, Inc. I'm your host, John Saunders. This show is designed to celebrate, elevate, and showcase many of the incredible authors that have published their books with NDP. In this show, we learned about the authors, their journeys, as well as the content and lessons from their books. This year, NDP will cross over 1,700 published authors on six continents and earned a spot on the Inc. 5000 list for the second year in a row. This is the fastest growing privately held companies in America. If you've ever thought of writing a book but weren't sure where to start or how to finish, visit manuscripts.com to learn more. This is episode eight of season six, and today I have with me David Olivencia. He's the author of Networking Excellence, which is due out this February 2023. David is a senior technology executive, unicorn investor, and exponential leader. He has leveraged networking and delivered outcomes at leading companies such as Accenture, NTT Data, Ford, Oracle, SoftTech, and Verizon, as well as supporting a broad portfolio of early stage tech startups, including several unicorns. David serves on multiple boards that utilize his approach to networks and deep technology expertise and has co-founded leading organizations, high tech and Angeles investors that have grown due to networking. David has been recognized as 40 under 40 by Crane's Detroit Business, Crane Chicago Tech 50, and Hispanic Business Magazine's most influential Hispanics in America. He has an engineering degree from Rose Holman, an MBA from Notre Dame, and an honorary doctorate from Bentley University, and he loves fishing. David, great to see you. Welcome to the show. John, excellent to be on the show. Thanks for the invitation. And great to be on the journey with NDP. All the success that they're having, the ink recognitions. Great to be great to be with you. It's a lot of fun. It's a pleasure to have you here today. You know, before we get into your book, which sounds fascinating to me, I think it's always great for our listeners to hear a little bit about people's career journey. You know, what led you to this moment? Where where are you at in your career? I've had an amazing, amazing, very fortunate career. I've been able to kind of climb the corporate ladder to senior executive roles at several Fortune 100, several that you mentioned there, and always in the technology industry. And then my knowledge of technology and the industry and disruption, the last 10 years or so, I've been leveraging that and investing in early stage startups through networking, right? I've, I've been able to help and support several unicorns, right? And, and that's been fun. And then also kind of along the way, been involved, either co-founded, led, been on boards of several different organizations, which have kind of helped me give back to the community, but also helped me learn and also help them grow. But kind of underneath all of that is networking to, to support the different growth in the different areas there. So that's kind of what led me to this journey, you know, to the book. And part of this journey has led you to several White House administrations. David, how did that happen? I, I've been fortunate. I've been invited across three presidential administrations to the White House. And it's really all through networking connections and helping the right people with their goals along the way. During the Obama administration, I got invited to the White House. And the story goes back to networking. I was at Oracle at the time, and I was part of their political action committee, which is it's a network in itself to help companies further their political agenda or policies that are very favorable to the companies. So as part of that network, I went to, I volunteered to be on the advisory board, which is if you're going to be a part of a network, you should be active in it. And I talk about that in the book. And then me being active and helping, there was their Oracle's PAC was involved with TechNet, which is another network of technology companies that influence legislation that are very favorable to the technology industry. So this group called TechNet, TechNet had an event at the White House. And I was invited as uh, due to my volunteering as part of Oracle and their political action committee to to be um, at that event. So I got invited 
And it was a little bit scary. I'm in this, I'm in this room. I'm at the well, first you're at the White House, right? But but then you're you're in this room. There's all these senior titans of the technology industry. But you 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 know you have to use these networking skills that I learned over time, and it really helped kind of ease the uh, ease the tension and the nervousness that I had. But at the networking event in the evening, we're talking to different people, and I connect with he was then the chairman of the Nasdaq, right? And we talk, and then and, you know, and I, what I talk about in the book is finding different synergies, finding different areas of value. I'm like, hey, I'm a part of this nonprofit that has our sponsors, our members of the Nasdaq, our members are technology executives at the Nasdaq. I love to op- I'd love us to open up the Nasdaq someday, which is another thing I talk about in my book is about being bold and just going after it. And guess what? He said, yeah, well, let's interchange cards. Let's connect. Let's connect with value and do that. Long story short, maybe six months later, I'm on stage opening up the NASDAQ, looking at across at all these members that are, you know, after kind of co-finding this organization in three years. And all of that is just because of networking, right? And it's just an amazing journey. And this is why I'm telling this is part of the book and the story. Incredible. So what I like about that story, and many things, but one thing that really stands out to me and something I share with authors and, and clients I've coached all the time is activity drives activity, right? You didn't just sign up for something and take a passive approach to it. You went out there, you engaged with others, you met people, you shook their hands, you took that first step, you were bold, asked for things, and here you are working in three different White House administrations. Absolutely incredible. So the author coaching program, how did you discover it? And you know, you're a busy guy working at a big firm. How did you fit it into your life? Yeah, so I, you know, I, I've due due to the my goal to write a book and admiring various authors and kind of having this expertise in networking. I said, I want I want to write a book. So I, you know, kind of with networking, you start reaching out to people and say, Hey, I have this goal. Random. I want to write a book. What do you think? What do you? And one of my friends, Selena Rivera, she said, "Hey, I'm in this program, New Degree Press. You know, I like it. It's coaching. I'm, I'm having fun with the program. I'm learning. And you know, if you want, I'm happy to make the connection." And I said, "Oh, sure, of course, did it." And and I've I've really come come to 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 enjoy it. And you know, the, you've got this spectrum of models, right? The kind of traditional publishers and and just pure independence. And I'm an investor, right? And I love disruption and I love kind of new business models and the most innovative business models. And, I, and, and me personally, the, this kind of never write alone coaching model is the best. So how did I fit it in? <clears throat> well, you know, I've, I've ran a marathon in my life. And as I was writing this book, you know, I thought this is very much like writing a marathon, right? Big goal, work, you know, weekend long runs, weekend long rides, and, uh, you know, building up to one date, which is like the marathon or publishing the book. But as I got in it and we started going through the process and, and learning and all this stuff, I said, you know, being an author writing book, it's not really a marathon. This is like a triathlon, right? Because <laughs> the, the running is, that's just the writing part of it. But there's also, you know, the sales and marketing, which is I, I put to like the bike, the bike part of the triathlon, right? Different strategy, different tool, different technique, different training to do that, right? And and then like the, then there's all the, the budgeting, the finance, the planning, the ROI and all the kind of the meeting scheduling, which I like to me is like the swimming. It's underwater. You don't necessarily see it, but it's just so vital to do it. And again, a different set of muscles to do that. So all of those together, and you know, to be is what is what makes it a triath like a triathlon. But what I, just like a, a great triathlon or triathlete, you know, you need a great coach, right? You need a coach that can push you, prod you, educate you when good times bad. And that's what I've got with the New Degree Press and the team there along the way, and it's been great. And uh, look forward to continuing the journey. That's fantastic. And maybe even the coach has offered a little bit of accountability for you as well, and the schedule and deadlines, right? Which, yeah, which uh, is important. This is important. There's a difference between writers and authors, right? I've met, when I wrote my book back in 2020, a number of people reached out to me and said, John, I've been writing a book for five years and I'm on chapter two. How did you actually get this done? <laughs> I right. had deadlines, I had a coach, I had you know guideposts I had to stay within and, and that made it work. One other operational question about the book journey before we get into the content of your book, which I'm fascinated by, your cover is amazing. The two hands shaking, you know, the scene there. What was that process like for you? How did the concept come together? It was great, and, and it exceeded my my expectations. You know, I, I sat down with the, the graphics coach at, at New Degree Press, and just kind of shared my thoughts and my ideas 
on what I was thinking with the book. And, you know, I had just a couple of just general things like, look, <clears throat> there's, it's about an accelerating digital world. So I want to show something with, you know, digital. There's about, it's, there's about connection, right? So I want to make sure that there's something that's showing, you know, connection. The, the, the work is capitalized. <clears throat> so I wanted to make sure that that was highlighted, but I also wanted a bit of a sim simple view. They came back with three wonderful options that I, I liked all three. And I put it out to my network, family, close friends, those I interviewed in the book. I said, what do you think? And it was kind of funny because almost it was like evenly divided across mostly the three, but pretty much evenly divided. So you, the ones who ended up breaking the tire are my kids. I just said, you know, because in the end, I, you know, my, they're my family and I, and I, and I, and I. I want them to be happy, right? So, so they they helped me narrow it to one. We did a bit of fine tuning, and it came together. And I really like it. You got, you know, you've got this kind of symbol of two hands shaking in a bit digital arranged, um, and it's it's really such a, a a great symbol of networking. If there was, you know, it's kind of the, you, it's hard to network without a handshake. It really, it, it, you know, although in a digital world, you, you don't necessarily need to do it, but but it's there. And it's got shows a bit of connections and it has that the word work really capitalized and out. And I, I just I think they did a phenomenal job. And I love the way it came together. It looks great. I love the color, the blue and the orange, the two sort of constellations shaking hands turned out really cool. And I think it's when you think actually the thumbnail for this very show, I went through a similar process on certainly with my cover as well. But the thumbnail for the show that's shown on YouTube and, and whatnot was chosen by my eight year old son. <laughs> <laughs> we had some similarities there, John. <laughs> I thought, who knows who's more of an expert on watching YouTube videos than my eight year old son? And uh, I gave him, I sent it out to a bunch of folks and then he made the final call on it. So, networking excellence, right? Building a strong value based network. In an accelerating digital world, no doubt that's right where we are in the world today. What's this book about, David? It's like taking my experiences in life journey around networking and all the things that I've learned and all the mistakes that I've made and seen people make, interviewing some of the world leaders in networking, reading some books and and edu you know, educating myself on all these different components of networking and, and pulling it all together. It, it, it talks a bit about well, what is networking and how do we what, how's it defined and and really I think the definition is is key that I lay out and it's you know creating and improving value value based relationships to facilitate mutual goal accomplishment right it's not about me it's about how do we both help each other with our goals so it, it lays out the introduction and then it lays out a, a bit about uh, what is networking why it's important and then three. Three major components or of the framework that I lay out for networking. One is the foundation. The second is executing off of that foundation. And the third is optimizing it. And wrapped around all of that is the work that, that goes into it. So it's it's all, and then I go into detail in my book about well, what makes a strong foundation for networking, right? What what are the things that you need to do to execute, to identify the right people in your network, to identify the right networks, to give tremendous value to them. And then what are the things that you do to optimize? And when you optimize, like we're going to be attending a networking events. How do you optimize? And what are all the tips and mistakes and all the great things that happen at networking events? And then all you now we're in this world of social media. So what are how do you how do you what is net how does networking work in social media? So laying a, a bit of that out, interviewing folks in that area who are really good in it, sharing my perspectives. So it's kind of all of that together in a methodology and a process to help the readers more efficiently get to networking excellence. So, so amazing. The networking roadmap, if you will, and particularly important in this world where we live so digitally and we can connect with people all over planet, you know, how do we go about doing that? Before we go there and get a bit more into your roadmap in the book, David, who do you think the audience for this book is? Yeah, it's, you know, I think it's anybody who is looking to increase their career velocity and, and accelerate in their careers, anybody who's looking for a job, and I think anybody who's looking to more rapidly accomplish their goals, right? Can I kind of lay that out in the in the de in the definition, right? And so those I so that and that audience, and, and I and I think it's this probably the 20 to 40 year range. And this is global. I mean, I think this, this is the, the audience is then global. I think when you get in the fifties and so, I think it's important as much, but I think you're pretty much, you know, whether it's your goals or setting your ways and your experience, it's, it's yeah, I think they'll find it interesting, but maybe not, not as much as the, those in their twenties and forties, twenties and forties. 
so many great lessons and so applicable for so many in their building their careers at really, it sounds like just about any stage, which is fantastic. So when you think about networking excellence, David, right, it, it certainly took a lot of energy to write time, blood, sweat, and tears, might we say, which takes a big mission and a, a why to write this book. You know, when you look across your life's journey, what do you think really drove you to get this book out there? Yeah, you know, the, the, if the first ring is like, I, I wanted to share my experiences. I've been very fortunate around just the technology executive career, senior executive career that I've had. The first part was I want to share these experiences and this process and methodology that I've been using and, and enhancing over the years with folks. So that, that was one. The second one, I said, well, is there demand for this, right? I mean, would there be, would there be and then people have always said, Dave, you should write a book on this. Dave, you're so connected. Dave, you've done the, I said, okay, there's part of the demand. But then John, if you if you ask people, like, what are the top skills to accelerate your career velocity or accelerating your career, your top skills to find a job, top skill to, to, to accomplish goals more rapidly? Number one or number two always is networking. You see it all the time, networking, networking. But the funny thing, John, as it relates to demand, which is the second area of why, they don't teach this thing in schools. I haven't seen yet a career. Maybe there are, but it's minimal to zero and more like zero. Where you see courses on networking and other, so many of us we stumble along, we do it, we learn from others, and kind of, and we we get we're we're okay, um, but so there's this demand part, right? The, that I believe whether it's the, the the number one, number one, or two people asking me to do it, there's there's demand for this, and then the third reason is just giving back, right? I mean, I think in the spirit of networking, you know, I want to give back, I want to make people accomplish their goals more rapidly, learn from the you know great authors, great people I interview, the, the my journey along the way. So I want to give back. And the third is in the spirit of networking. Those are the whys, John. I can almost hear the lean startup roadmap in here and how you came to bring this book to the world, but certainly having a powerful mission that has demand that people are interested in and is going to create value for others, which certainly sounds like you've done here. So networking, where have you seen people effectively leverage networking and, and deliver great outcomes? Yeah, you know, there's a story I use in my book of a individual named Jamie Catherton. And, and there's and there's I'm gonna touch on different areas of his story and how it kind of parallels with points and, and lessons in my book. He's a history major, and you know, part of his self-assessment, which is part of networking, and your goals, which are part of networking, because you know, I I don't know if history is for me. I really want to break into investing in, in financial services. So he reaches out to his network and he says, hey, this is my goal. And they say, well, what, he finds out what his friends say, or the people in his network say, hey, there's two podcasts that you should listen to. One is Invest Like the Best with Patrick O'Shaughnessy, who's the host. And the other one was Master in, in Masters in Business by Barry Ritholtz. And so he does that. He does the work, so he listens to the podcast, write down every term, does the work, listens, learns, and all that stuff, and he ends up breaking into a career in financial services. So as the story goes on, and this is kind of the other part of networking, he's not afraid, and he reaches out to Patrick O'Shaughnessy, and he says, "Direct, hey, thank you. I was able to get a job. You're, you got a great podcast, you know, something to that effect. And I'd love to have lunch with you, which is another kind of part in the in, in the book. And Patrick responds and he says, yeah, we'd love to have lunch. And he says, and, you know, kind of, and he says, wow, that's kind of interesting. Well, let me, I'm also reach out to Barry and say, do the same thing. And, and he reaches out to Barry and it's in Barry, and Barry says, yeah, I'd like to have breakfast. Well, so what, what he, what they didn't realize is Jamie lived in Washington, DC. And this is this part about work that I think is very important in networking. So to make this happen, Jamie gets up at 4 a.m., gets in his car, or he commutes to New York City, and he has the breakfast, excellent breakfast, and he kind of arranges the schedule so he gets on time and makes the lunch and heads back. He and the story gets better. He then follows up with, you know, with Patrick, and then he gets through social media, which is the other thing I talk about. And these continuous connections of value, he connects with Jim. O O'Shaughnessy, who's the co-founder, chairman of O'Shaughnessy Capital Management. And they, they, and he's got like 150,000 followers on Twitter, very active in social media. But Jamie's interacting, connecting with value, clutch that to the point that after a couple of years, both Patrick and Jim O'Shaughnessy, they say, 
they say, Jamie, you have to join our firm. And it, it goes to the point of, you know, there's so many different threads there of like adding value, not being afraid to ask, having like, what is your goal and your purpose in life? The work, like getting up at, look, this networking is not easy, right? Getting up at 4 a.m. to commute, to meet somebody. And, and then, you know, in, in the end, leveraging social media. So I think it's it's just a great story of somebody who used, and look, and he didn't, there's, and you said this, there's no job application for this stuff, right? He just, he made the connection, he added value, he built a relationship and they said, no, we want you. And that's how a lot of, a lot of these, these jobs happen. So John, just, a, I think it's a great story that really emphasizes a lot of key points in the book. You know, and you talk about in your title, you, you showcase networking, you capitalize the word work, right? Is this, is this part of that story? Yeah, no, it is right, and you know, and there's work to you know, as you continuously you know think about your foundation. There's work as you're identifying and how do you add value to people? How do you connect? There's work getting the networking events. There's work on social media. There's just it's it's a ton of work and it doesn't it's fun, but there's there's a lot of work. It doesn't happen by chance. I heard an interview, one of my favorite shows. I like to listen to a podcast, of How I Built This with Guy Raz, and he interviewed the restaurateur Jose Andreas. Oh, yeah. He talks about the fact that, you know, I meet these people throughout my life and and they say, I want to do this or that. And I ask them, what are you doing about it? I'm sitting on my couch watching Netflix. And he's like, what? <laughs> how are you going to get anything done while you're binge watching TV? You got to go out and meet people, talk to people, create value for them, as you said. And uh, that was one that really stuck with me from Mr. Andreas. I certainly love his restaurants here in town as well. I'm, so, I'm eating at his restaurant in Chicago tomorrow. So yeah, I love it. I love it as well. <laughs> oh, very nice. Very nice. You talk about this foundation concept, having a strong foundation for network. What does that mean, and you know why? Why? Why is that important? Yeah, you know, it, and it's it, you know, it's amazing. And the analogy I like to use: if you think about the sun, right? It you know, it gives us light, it gives us energy, it gives us vitamins, it gives us life, right? And then you look at the planets; it's you know that that circle around it, right? I think us as individuals, we're the centers of our our network. We're the sun. Of our network that, that give that energy, that life, that light, you know, to our networks. And the more that we understand about ourselves, the deep self understanding, the stronger that energy, that stronger that light, and the stronger our network, you know, is going to be. So that self assessment, right? And the components, you know, what is your vision, mission, your purpose in, in life? What makes you happy? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are your values? And what what is your value toolkit? Like, what value can you give to others in your network? Deeply understanding those components are, are one strong, vital component of the foundation. But from those, then you, well, what are your goals? So now, once you understand that, well, you'd identify your goals, which is a second part of the foundation. The third is now, if I have my, my self assessment, my goals, now what's the brand I want to communicate to the world? And then to your point around earlier point around Netflix and bin watching, the fourth part of the fourth part of the foundation is what are the routines and rituals that you take in to help drive and strengthen that that foundation? You know, it's like, hey, we've, you know, we we you know, we have, I think they say like 40% of our lives are spent in routines and, and rituals. But the the good, you know, what what's challenging a lot of times is sometimes that 40% is not spent doing the right thing. So the stronger you have the foundation, you can align those rituals and routines to help build that. So that's, that's the foundation that's then used, John, for identifying the right people in your network, identifying the networks, adding tons of value. And that's used for the optimization side, which is social media, right? And you see a lot of people, they post about a lot of different things. And, and, and I'd say the stronger your foundation the more acute and more direct and more meaningful what you put out and what you communicate to the world on social media is going to be. So John, that's that's why this this foundation is is so vital. Having that foundation, ultimately figuring out who to partnership with, how to add value to them, and then how to really communicate that to the world. You know, I think the the biggest challenge of concepts I heard you talk about in there is is understanding your values, David. I think some people, I would tell you from my life experience, a lot of people wrestle with that. How would you suggest somebody starts to identify what their values are and connect with them? I think you need to take some time and really do deep uh, reflection, quiet reflection, regular reflection, 
and say, well, what what do I value in life? What are the characteristics that are meaningful to me? I think, you know, then there's a bit of also you can do, and I talk about in my book, you know, ask people, you know, hey, the way I, what what do you think my values are in the way I act, in the way, in the things I say, in the things I do, how I spend my time? And and then you, as part of your foundation, well, is that what I, is that the value, are those the values that I want? And so it's just this ongoing, continuous journey. And I think it's, it's, this is why I talk about rituals of, you know, looking at your values, looking at your purpose, looking at your mission in life, looking at what you love and what you like and what, this stuff changes over time and over our lives. So it requires this continuous work <laughs> to really strengthen that, that foundation and your values, John. I surely appreciate this concept of not only trying to identify those values on your own self-reflection, but then reaching out to some version of your network to see what they think. And is there a connection there? And you know, it's an exercise I've worked a lot of people on in terms of brand. And I, that's the language I like to use around this, you know, is what you're putting out there, what people are hearing and seeing, and is there a disconnect? If so, what can we do about that? Uh, fantastic roadmap here. You know, networking has certainly evolved in the last number of years in this accelerating digital world, as you allude to in the title of your book. You know, how have you seen that happen and what's what's going on there? You know, it's it's amazing because, you know, you've got all these n- traditional social channels, new social media platforms, you know, TikTok, Substack, all these, all these different channels. And then digital keeps, you know, increasing and, and all this stuff with AI and, and, and all this stuff. So there's all this continuous platforms and ways to communicate on social to reach new people in your network to broaden your reach to reach them instantaneously so that's the good news right the bad news or the challenge is is well if you don't have a strong foundation and you're not and you're not on brand and on point and 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 what you believe in and what you're the value you're trying to communicate to the world those can be those can be negatives towards you right so you know it's having that foundation understanding your networks and how you can leverage these channels to communicate and add value to help them be be successful and really and, and and connect right and help help your network either the networks or the individuals that you're are within your network leverage these channels and communicate to help them be successful so it's it's and it's accelerating digital world right it's not it's not slowing down anytime soon john I had the great privilege to go to Uganda this summer for an author that I've done a lot of work with her book launch Lisa Randolph and as talk about digital connected world we live in today, she lives in California. I live in DC. And while we were there, another author I did a bunch of work with, she is from Mongolia. She was uh, actually, her job brought her to Uganda during that period. So the first time I met the three of them face to face, the other two of them face to face was in Uganda at a book launch, which was for me was just like, wow, this is the world we live in today. Yeah. And, and that, you know, and so it's a bit of they're in, in your network, you know, in your extended network. You, there's digital that brings you together and you have some common interests, right? As well. And, you know, I, I, I'm not making any assumptions here, but I bet there was a, a lot of conversation about all well, understanding each other, about how do you help each other, right? In, in your respective journeys. So, yeah, right. And uh, that journey was very much about the partnership we developed and developing a partnership with some government officials in Uganda. And they were kind enough to bring us down there. You can see my, uh, this is my gorilla walking stick sitting behind me here that I bought oh. in the, the windy, impenetrable forest after our hike that day. And, getting to come face to face with gorillas it was unbelievable so much fun you talked about you talked about value in a different way than we talked about just a few minutes ago right adding value to others as you go about networking which is so so important what advice would you give to someone who maybe particularly someone in their 20s or 30s who's talking to someone maybe in their 40s or 50s and saying what value can i add to this person what would you tell that person yeah you should deeply deeply understand that person what is their bio? What have what has been published about them? And for, formulate a hypothesis on well, what what do they really care about? What's of importance to them, and what do they value, and what's going to make them successful? So, the, and then so that's one side of it. The second side of it is you still need to under there might be based on that you need to deeply understand your what I call your value toolkit. Well, what are the values that you could bring to any? any relationship. It could be your insights. It could be, and even if you're 20, 30, you still have a perspective on the world that's unique or unique skill skill set that can be, but you really need to deeply understand those. And in, and, and one of the things that I say, and I've used this too, and it's, it's kind of the, kind of the last point of value is like, in the end, it's sometimes it could just be volunteering your time, 
right? And so that you might find a cause that this person is interested in that you can say, hey, you know, I I really, I, I, and, it, you know, it should, it should be sincere, but you say, hey, uh, this could be a cause that I can help you with this cause as well. And so that could be a way, but I think it's a, it's a bit of the, bo- it's both sides, right? Really understanding what makes them, what they care about and what's going to make them successful, but really, and then trying to match what you can, you can do, you know, to help them, help them be successful. And, you know, and sometimes they'll be open to sharing thoughts and all that stuff. But I think what, what endures in these, those type of relationships are where there's this kind of continuous, you know, networking, mutual goal accomplishment. So that's kind of the part of the definition there. That's such a big part of it, right? Not just thinking about what's in it for me, but how can I create and add value for others? And it starts with understanding that other person and crossing what I can bring to the world and what's of use to them, right? This is that intersection, the Venn diagram, as I often like to say. Really powerful stuff here. So networking sometimes can have a negative connotation. David, what would you say is the biggest misconception about networking? You know, there, there's a couple different, you know, misconceptions, right? One is that, you know, it might be hard or overwhelming. I mean, it it, it requires work. And I, you know, I kind of lay that out in the book, but but it but it's not, and it can be fun, right? It, it should be fun because you're you're connecting, you're helping people, which is kind of it's kind of in our DNA, right? To to work with it. So, 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 so that's the first one. The second kind of misconception I think is you 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 have to have tens of thousands and millions of people in your network and stuff to be excellent at networking. I, I don't believe that's the case at all. It's not an, it's not a question of how big your network is. Is I think it's more of a question of are you are you doing are you getting that mutual goal accomplishment with those that who you identify and feel are the right amount within your network. The third is I think that 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 somebody can just wing it and be excellent at networking. It requires work, it requires a solid found you know to be excellent at networking. So those are those are some of the the you know the misconceptions, Sean. Thinking we can just kind of get it done by going out and talking to people, but really it's about having a plan, understanding your own value and net worth and values and figuring out where that intersection is and aligning it with the goals that you're after and helping others. What a beautiful message you're putting out there to the world. You know, David, you've evolved so much as a human, I get the sense of over your lifetime. How did the book further help that development or what did you learn about yourself along the way through writing the book? Yeah, you, you know, you, I, I ha- as I wrote the book, I mean, I had these kind of disparate thoughts of kind of what makes great networking, but really never put it into this kind of methodology, process, framework, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, that was one, you know, kind of as part of this journey that I thought was was good, was good for me. And I think I'm, I'm confident it will be good for others who read the book. You know, the second was I had a, I'd say a good foundation, but I think writing this and, and realize that I'm going to be an authority in this is really I said, well, I need to strengthen this foundation, right? So, so as I've, I've strengthened my rituals, I've strengthened my understanding about myself, I've strengthened my goals, I've, you know, just a lot of things that when you write about it and you put it on, you say, well, I, I definitely need to be following this. And so it's really helped strengthen my foundation, John, along the way. And, uh, you know, I guess the other end of it, mean, it's just, I think this whole journey of, of writing and the, the, the business of, of books and publishing, right. It's just another thing that's really just something I, I you know, I've learned and, and uh, I've really enjoyed and really come to appreciate and look, and I'm always learning. I'm not, I'm continuing to learn. I just find it fascinating, the industry and even how technology is helping shape the publishing industry as well. So those are, those are some of the things, John. This program tends to attract a number of lifelong learners, which certainly sounds like the story for you, David. It's so often the case. We have all these thoughts but about how to get something done. And when we go through the process, the coaching process of writing a book and formulating a book and building out that template, books have a template to them. Most people don't realize that, but they really do. And there's a reason for it because it helps you lay out all these thoughts you've had over the years in a very logical sequence so others can learn from it. And as you just shared, when you teach somebody something that you know, you actually learn better and more thoughtful ways to think about it and grow your influence and impact on it so much more immensely. As a coach, I work with leaders all the time to help them do that. Extract what your team is really passionate and gets energy out of and have them focus on that as it relates to the business and then share what they've learned with their team members so they can learn from that member and everybody wins, right? It's about lifting everybody up together. And it certainly sounds like a a big part of your mantra here. David, what's been an unexpected positive in writing the book? I, you know, I've got to meet some really 
good authors. I knew I would meet some authors, but I didn't expect that I would kind of become friends and meet a lot of different authors and really be supportive and rooting them on on this journey. And then even like, John, even yourself, right? I think the relationships I built and meeting people like yourself who just across all aspects are, are, you know, have a lot of similar values and did not expect that, right? I kind of expected to write, coach, you know, and get it out there. But that to me was a, just a very unexpected, positive, positive. This, this community, this network that you've been brought into and, and the, the community writing aspect, right? The tagline here is right, never write alone. And it's so, so important. You go through this challenge, this marathon or triathlon, as you shared earlier, and when you do it together with folks and go through this similar struggle, you can you develop deeper relationships and you find some really interesting people along the way. I heard somebody say once, oh, well, everybody's got a book out there now. I'm going to demystify that for everybody listening right now. There are 380 million Americans, give or take. 49,000 wrote a book last year. Do the math yeah. on that. We're talking about you know one thousandth of one percent here, give or take, or something like this. You know, Far less than one percent. So it's still an extremely unique group that are putting books out. It's hard. It's not easy. <laughs> it's almost like networking. It's it's not easy. Like running a triathlon isn't e- or doing a triathlon isn't easy. They, 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 they're, they're hard, but this is the right program, right? I think, like you said, the deadlines, the coaching, the the capabilities, the tools is very very helpful. So networking excellence, David. What's the key message you hope readers take away from your book? Yeah, networking is extremely valuable if you want that career velocity, career acceleration. You want to find help find a job. You want to more rapidly accomplish your goals, but it requires work. It requires work through a strong foundation, work work through execution, work through optimization, and this continuous work. But through the stories that I share, my life experiences, the books, and all the kind of things that I put in into this book, that these it's the recipe, the discipline process. To that that you can read and anybody can read to achieve and accomplish networking excellence. That is awesome. Such a great roadmap. So many great lessons and really step-by-step process for how to get this done and, and think your way through it and, and navigate it and put it to paper. So networking, great for so many aspects of people's yes. life, particularly when they're in transitions. It sounds like you're in a bit of a transition here coming up, David. So what's next for you and what are some of your goals for the book? Yeah, so you know, from a book perspective, Look, I want to get this book into in, in as many hands as possible to help them do the things that I that I touched on earlier. So I'm going to be on the podcast circuit. I'm going to be doing writing on social. I'm going to be speaking. I've already got a couple Fortune 500 gigs lined up, so I'll be speaking. And then for more more kind of other work side, I'm going to be serving on corporate boards. I'm going to be you know doing more angel investing. I'm even potentially thinking about my second book around angels and unicorns and more more to, more to come there. And then doing more more investing, but you know, launching a fund and and doing other things. Those are just things that are going to keep me busy in this kind of next chapter <laughs> in my life. Kind of a rewire from my the, for, the the Fortune 500 roles that I've had. So many great days ahead. And obviously, you've had a tremendous run here so far. And for those who might not know, a Unicorn is a company that found its way to a billion dollars within a very short period of time. And you've invested in two. It was Grin. And what was the second one? Ship Bob. Unbelievable. Well, congratulations on those and finding your way to them. So David, if people want to learn more about you and your book, where might they go? Yeah. So a couple. So on LinkedIn, just LinkedIn, David Olivencia. You can do the hash and get get there. On Twitter, it's D Olivencia. Facebook, the same D Olivencia. Instagram, I'm coming hotter on the Instagram, PR Devo on Instagram. That's how they can find me on social, John. I want to share a great praise quote from Dr. Robert Rodriguez, president of DRR Advisors and author of Employee Resource Group Excellence. He shared Networking excellence is a must read for anyone looking for an edge to advance their career and accelerate their promotional velocity. How did that feel to get that quote from Dr. Rodriguez? He's an expert on employee resources group, published author, speaks across many Fortune 500 companies, and he understands networking as well. And and I, and I you know I quote him in the book, and it's just kind of this thing on nine one one networking. It's like you know when people you haven't heard from somebody, John, in like seven years, eight years. And they immediately come, they don't even say hi, they just ask you for something, right? So we talk about that in the book. You call it now the term is 911 network. And it's not my I, I give give Robert all the credit. 
And you know, we, we him and I will be on tour talking a bit about that. That too, who knows? Maybe that 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 term goes viral. We'll see. Don't be a nine one one networker. I think is what I'm hearing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you got it. David, unbelievable roadmaps and so many key lessons that our listeners and readers can learn from. Congratulations on getting the book out there. Thank you so much for sharing your story with the creator community. Oh, thanks for having me, John. It was a pleasure. I look forward to you know the, continuing the journey. Pleasure is all mine. David Olivencia's book, Networking Excellence, Building a Strong Value-Based Network in, in an Accelerating Digital World, will be available wherever you buy books online this February 2023. Don't forget to subscribe to the Creator Community channel on your favorite podcast platform and be sure to leave us a review. If you're ready to write your book, visit manuscripts.com to learn about how to turn your idea into a book in about one year. I'm your host of the Creator Community, John Saunders. Keep creating.